Hello everyone. So today we are going to look into how we uh, we can predict uh, weather data uh, or uh, how we can predict weather uh, based on the features like the drizzle, rain, uh, sorry, this one, precipitation, uh, temperature, temperature minimum, max, and then the wind. So we are going to predict it based on uh, these four features. We are going to say whether the rain is, uh, the weather is drizzle, rain, sun, snow, or fog. We are going to predict these uh, weathers. And uh, I'm using this uh, data set, as you can see here, I have downloaded it. It's uh, Seattle uh, weather, uh, which is a state in US, if I'm not wrong, or maybe a city in US. You can get any type of data, any country or city data. Uh, so I'm going to start importing uh, Pandas uh, library over here uh, so that I could read the uh, CSV files. And uh, first what I'm going to do, I'm going to say PDF, which is data frame is equal to, I'm going to read that file. I'm, I'm going to say PD dot uh, read CSV. So this is a method in uh, pandas where you can uh, read the uh, csv files just like i'm doing it so i can read the head of this uh, data set and i can check uh, so this contains the date uh, precipitation temperature maximum temperature minimum wind and weather so uh, basically uh, these are all the uh, features and this will be our target so feature features are all the things that the model is going to be trained on so we're going to pass these features into model and then we are going to tell him that you know what predict the the uh, weather of uh, based on these features we don't need the date field uh, so we are going to ignore it because you know date doesn't matter so uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to check whether this data has any empty values if, uh, if it has any empty values we are going to remove it because uh, oh there is a function so the reason why we would remove uh, empty values is because uh, uh, that would be really helpful in machine learning model we need uh, kind of uh, abstract data we don't need any empty kind of data so we don't have any empty data so we can move to the next phase where we are going to specify the uh, features so the features that we have are uh, all these right so we can say that drop these two and uh, and take all these so the way we are going to do it we can say that df dot drop is a function where we can drop columns and i'm going to say columns and uh, then i'm going to say the uh, sorry so the first column is um, date and the second one is weather we are going to dro drop both of them because uh, we don't need date and weather is our uh, target. It's not a feature. So I'm, then we can say for the Y, Y is our weather. So now if I check the X, uh, as you can see, these are the four columns that we need. These are the features. And then for the Y, it will be a one single uh, series or array. And uh, uh, it contains all the type of the rain, uh, the weather, drizzle, rain, fog, or sun. Okay, so now what we are going to do, we are going to split this data into training and testing. So I'm going to import this function called the uh, train test split, which is a built-in uh, function in the scikit library. You can search for it. So train test split basically splits your data into training and testing uh, data sets. So we are going to use that. Uh, I'm going to say train test split, and it would uh, it would be this function. And then I'm going to say uh, x train. These are the values that it would return. This function returns these values. So x train. Uh, then we have the x test, then we have the y train, then uh, sorry, y train, then we have the y test. So basically, x and y are features and targets, as you know. So train test split, we are going to pass the x, which is the features, and the y, which is the target or the uh, the thing that we want to achieve, the uh, outcome that we want to achieve. And then we are going to say test size. So test size is basically the size of the test data. So I'm going to say 30% for the testing data and 70% for the uh, training data. So, and then we can specify a random state so that it selects the data randomly. And I'm going to specify 42. You can specify any number of here, but, but 42 is a really common number. So that's why I'm using it. And then if I check the X train or uh, uh, the X test, so it would contain values like this. So randomly selected values, as you can see by the index. And if I check the Y train or Y test, uh, it's the same uh, randomly selected values and it is single column. So now what we're going to do, we're going to import a, uh, a model from the sklearn uh, linear models. So we are going to use uh, logistic regression because it is used for the classification of the uh, columns or the data. So it is a classification model. So that's why we are going to use the logistic regression. You can use uh, different uh, classification models like random forest, decision trees, nav bias, or any other you want. But I'm going to use this one uh, as most of the people are familiar with this. So I'm going to say logistic regression. And now if I run this, so I have initiated it. Now I can say model.fit. I'm going to train it. On what data it takes two arguments as you can see x and y basically these are the uh, trainings training data sets we can say x train and the y train we uh, we did it before right we split the data so i'm going to pass the 
X train and then the Y train, which is this one, right? So now if I run it, it will be drained. Uh, the data is not too much. So uh, don't ignore this. The uh, this is a type of error which uh, most of the time I face it. It has a, a small fix we can, which you can search online. You have to pass an argument over here, and then everything this error will uh, will disappear. But basically, your model has been trained. If you see this kind of blue box or this return, uh, which is a kind of a, a object or a glass, I don't uh, know. But uh, basically, the model has been trained. Fit model to basically trains your model. Now we can uh, check the predictions of it by saying model dot predict. So we are going to predict as you can see this takes uh, one argument which is the x and the x is the testing data so we have already passed the training data to fit and then we are going to pass the x test which is this one to the uh, prediction so if i check the prediction predictions basically contain the uh sun or all all the kinds of the uh weather so as you can see these are the weather types so it predicted it based on the x test so if i check the x test it contains these values so for each of these values it predicted a new column called weather so that's what it did the prediction now we can check the evaluation of this um, of this model uh, like how uh, what is the accuracy of this model and all that so we can say for matrix uh, import so matrix import classification model so we can say the classification report sorry and then i'm going to print the classification report it will basically give us the accuracy of the function so it takes two arguments the first one is the y true which are the y test values and the predicted values predicted values are basically these values now if i run it uh, as you can see the accuracy of this model is 85 percent which is pretty much good it's a really good accuracy and uh, we can proceed with it uh, you can ignore the rest of the things i mean they are not that much important the main important one is this one most of the people check this one which is the 85 or sometimes it should be uh, about uh, it should be at least above 85 or 80. so now we are going to check it on the testing data to check whether our, our model is working correctly or not so i'm going to say test weather so it's a weather of a certain day we don't know what that is all we know is these four columns right uh, these four columns uh, let me copy them so i'm going to uh, pass this so basically now we are going to test it the model whether uh, it gives us any kind of result based on the uh, input uh, parameters these are the input weather parameters as you can see the temperature the wind and the uh, per precipitation now we can say that um, uh, let's say 10 uh, let's say temperature maximum is 20 and the minimum is let's say 10 uh, we can say wind is uh, 5.4 and then i'm going to say um so basically we cannot pass this uh, weather test weather because it's a simple dictionary we cannot pass it into model so in order for model to detect it it needs to be a data frame so we can convert this uh, into a data frame using this method uh, which basically converts it into a test uh, it would be a test weather data if i check the test weather it would contain a single row uh, so yeah, i think i did something wrong uh, so how yes yeah, so. so as you can see the test weather which is this one it's a single dictionary you cannot pass this kind of dictionary so in order for your model uh, for the testing data to be tested you need to pass a data frame like this so now it's a data frame like a 2d kind of kind of an array you can say uh, now what i can do is i can say model dot predict so it would give me the weather for this data so based on this data it would predict the weather so i'm going to say test data frame and then if i run it it says rain so now you know what let's increase the uh, temperature like for example to 40 and then i say the minimum is like uh let's say 30 and the precipitation it's let's just say 0, 0.0 and then the wind is fine now if you check it uh, it changes it to sun because 40 degrees is a lot of you know it's a heat uh just like in the middle east or middle eastern areas so 40 degrees are, is a little hotter temperature so that's why it's giving us sun so sun basically mean a hot temperature so this is basically how you can predict uh weather based on the input data so uh, it's really simple. It's a really simple method. All you need to do is just uh, predict your, uh, uh, sorry, uh, differentiate between the features and the target. So the target would basically be either zero, one, or drizzle, rain, just like these. So it would be kind of a classification. And the precipitation, these mainly would be like these things. The feature, they would mainly be like numbers. So based on them, uh, you would either detect, uh, you would get either a rain, sun, or all these kind of extra things. You can use any data set. I have used this data set, which was available uh, open source on the table. So I'm going to provide its link and you uh, provide the code link. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, thanks. Bye.